Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. Man, there's so many different ways to promote your podcast, right? Like TikTok, Instagram, Reels, Shorts, Video, Written Word, Memes. How? Uh, huh. There's just too much to do, right? So where should you focus? My guest today is Kate from Drunk Mythology Gals. She's got a podcast that has a great back catalog. How can she utilize that for SEO and for marketing purposes to increase the listens in that back catalog? And how can she use that to promote a forthcoming podcast? I'm going to break it all down in this Q&A session where we try to figure out what's the best way to market her podcast and use her titles and show notes for the best SEO to make it highly searchable in all these different platforms. It's something you won't want to miss. Stay tuned here on Podcasting and Platforms. Kate Reynolds, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about your podcast, Drunk Mythology Gals. Sure. I started this podcast one drunken evening. No. <laughs> back, yeah, back That's in... That's my first question is, how drunk are you? I only listened to half an episode. You didn't it, sound too drunk. It has evolved. <laughs> it was a drunk evening when I was actually talking with your cousin who was oh really of, okay yeah who was one of the co-hosts and we're both writers and we're both published authors and we were complaining how much people get mythology wrong when they write books about mythology yeah, that sounds and like how much Jenny. research we do to put yeah. into our books to make them correct and so we're like why don't we just repurpose it because often in marketing the principle is use. And so we have all this material right at our fingertips. And we're like, let's, let's just start a podcast and see how it goes. So it was this very non-committal thing. And we just started trading off every other episode. One would be about Greek mythology, my area of expertise, and one would be about Norse mythology, her area of study. And then about, I think, two months into our podcast, we got a friend of ours, other Jen, who's now our co-host, to listen. And she's like, I know what you guys need. You need me. <laughs> and <laughs> basically, she Sounds came like on as the sort of general audience character or role, if you will. Right. So she's the one who stops us when we get a little too animated. And she's like, what? <laughs> so that's her role. And so we're basically a podcast about mythology, some Norse mythology, mostly Greco-Roman era mythology, and also history, ancient history, trying to draw some parallels between the lessons of history and mythology in today. I don't know how that's working out, but that's actually something we should talk about. Yeah, um, I, I love my cousin. She's a great writer. And I, you said you're a published author too. What are some of your books? Give us a couple titles that we can check out on Amazon. Yeah, so the main one, especially that related to mythology, is called Downcast. And it is based on a very famous story in Greek mythology, Hades and Persephone. But I took it and put it in high school. Interesting. That's fun. Yeah. And, and it's got and a little so, mystery and romance and adventure and Cerberus. <laughs> so this is what I love about podcasting is that everybody has that thing that they're nerdy about. And mm -hmm. Genevieve is very well read. I don't know if she calls herself Genevieve anymore, but she'll always be Genevieve or yep. Genevieve <laughs> Jenny to me. She's my first cousin to one of my favorite aunts. Can't say my favorite aunt because then I'll get Patty and Linda and Lisa and everybody else <laughs> mad at me. But yeah, she's an accomplished writer. And like you'd think, oh, we're just sitting around drinking wine, talking about mythology. Let's put it on a podcast. And that has borne out, what, almost 100 episodes? And yeah, kind we're, of, we're closing have you been in on it. Yeah, uh, almost 100 episodes. And how long have you been doing it? And how has the platform evolved since from where it began? One of the things I think comes with trying to bootstrap your own podcast and be an independent podcaster and not be part of like Wondery or Parcast or one of those bigger networks yeah. is you got to figure out everything on your own. And yeah. Jen and I started very bootstrap. Our goal was to not spend any money <laughs> at first until we actually figured out whether we liked it, whether this was a thing, whether we were going to keep doing it. And it turned out we did keep doing it and we did like it. So we put together a website and we have a Patreon and we have like the basic kit. We even mm -hmm. have like a little bit of merch here and there. And, but we had to learn a lot of stuff along the way. 
And it went from starting with a free recording and distribution platform to going with two different recording and distribution platforms, <clears throat> excuse me, and just trying to figure out the whole technical aspect of it. That's where Kim came in for our audio. She actually does uh, a lot of the audio editing on most of our episodes. Right. So when like she'll edit in little trolling side effects, mm -hmm. sound effects rather, like boos or applause or French accordion music when I break into French because sometimes <laughs> I have to quote something. <laughs> we have a lot of fun and uh, it's been challenging. Like. Sometimes it is a real slog. Yeah. And we're in a bit of a hiatus, not a formal hiatus, but we're summoning, summoning the will to keep going. <laughs> a little bit that, but we're actually in this awkward moment of growing and almost redefining who we are. Mm. Okay. Because we talk about mythology. I it turns out the more I dig into it, the more of what pulls me because I'm the main content researcher and presenter is the history of it. Yeah. And, and yet there are so many history podcasts out there. There are actually yeah. a lot of mythology podcasts out there. It's, and it's just trying to find out where we go next okay. because there are still a lot of myths and stories to tell, but I want to have a little bit more freedom to, explore other areas that I'm interested in. So if you were to face zero, so I'm just looking here, just looking back at your catalog. Like if I were to say like, all right, you're going to face no penalty because a little bit about where I was with We Are Libertarians started it in 2012 mm -hmm. and was talking libertarian politics. And the main mission was to get people to sign up to join the libertarian party. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhere along the way, I just lost interest a lot in the Libertarian Party. And then I lost a little bit, a lot of it of interest in politics in general. And so I've definitely faced that where, especially after 2020, you're like, I don't want to, I'll still talk about this stuff because I've got a big audience and they mm -hmm. expect a certain sort of style, a certain sort of content matter. But I almost feel limited by being a Libertarian podcaster that is supporting and growing the libertarian movement yeah and i don't really like the libertarian movement anymore i like the ideas but i don't necessarily want to encourage people ruin people. everything yeah yeah <laughs> especially the, the current crowd but that's a whole different podcast yeah but, and i've talked about a little bit about that on on this on the patreon but is it that sort of thing where you almost feel limited by i'm um, serving the audience mythology that's what they've come to expect i've got mm -hmm. these few hundred or few thousand people listening i can't let them down but i also want to pivot into something a little bit different yeah I is mean, it the disappointment of the audience that you think that you're worried about what's the hesitation to even say out loud exactly what you want to do so i can say exactly out loud what i want to do and this is actually the very first announcement of it <laughs> because we're hopefully going to be launching early next year i have created a new podcast that I am writing and producing right now called Murder Most Ancient, where it's true crime meets history. Okay. And I actually listen to more true crime podcasts than I do anything else. Mm -hmm. And I love true crime. It's just my sort of getaway. But I also love history. And I found through combing through everything that there is there's this niche that has not been met because everybody is starting to tell the same stories over and over again. But part of the reason is researching older crimes is hard. Yeah. It takes real, almost academic level research chops. Whereas something like the Delphi murders or the Burger Chef murders, two local situations, I've seen multiple podcasts about both of yep. those. And actually the Delphi murders now have a mythology aspect to it. Yeah, there's a whole situation that's which is not mythology. That is not how you greet. That is not how no. you mythology. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> there's a dark aspect that people aren't reporting on because it's bad. But yeah, I see what you mean. Like, there's the research. I always say to people like doing a podcast is there's the research and writing phase, then there's the production phase, and then there's the distribution phase. Yep. And the 
production phase and the distribution phase can is usually what people focus on, but it's really that preparation phase, that writing phase. Yeah. It's very difficult. I'm doing some history stuff now too. And it's just taken me forever because I'm not a natural born researcher like you, but <laughs> it's what makes it good. It's what makes it interesting as opposed yeah. to let me just go and chat GPT and grab whatever's out there. Yeah. It literally. So the way I'm going to be structuring it is we're going to have six episodes per case basically, like the mini series that you'll see from different networks. And so and are these like older murders? Are they like- These are anything prior to 1700. Okay. All right. So I'm actually, my very first murders happen, a uh, murder case happens in ancient Greece, right around the fifth century. And it has a, it it's a double murder. It's a cold case. It's a- it's got, I don't want to give too much away, but it's got like f bad family relationships and dynamics. It's got, the more you study it, the more you're like, well, that's just like- Human beings haven't changed. Yeah. Like, I'm toying with the tag, the tagline. It's like Dateline with togas. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what it is. And I, but what I want to do and what I try to do with Drunk Mythology Gals is bring history to a place where it's, not intimidating, where it's fun, where it's accessible, where it's even bizarre, because that's, look at who we are today. We are a hot mess of a species, but we were a hot mess of a species 2000 years ago too. So I think a lot of history, and I've been reading a lot of, a lot of these academic articles and books to prepare for this, to do my research. And it, a lot of it is very dry and I know why people don't get into yeah, it. Yeah, why they don't get in. So is it is the new show going to be like drunk mythology gals where it's a little conversational or is it going to be it's going to be a little bit more produced, a little bit more storytelling. We're still going to have a conversation element to it because I, I think that's important because where other Jen is gonna ask me questions is where everybody's going to have questions. She tends to pick out like the, wait, what do you mean they said this? Or why didn't the trial system work like this? But when we started Drunk Mythology Gals, it took a while to really fine tune our format. And now the opening and closing and the rhythm is really established. And I like, oh, <laughs> my dogs just came in the room. Sorry That's okay. That. I can't really hear them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, the issue I've had is researching every episode for Drunk Mythology Gals. For me, it's probably eight to 10 hours of researching sure. and writing. And that is a couple thousand words per episode that I literally write out in a script because if I just am trying to tell a story or I, I tend to get a little bit ADHD with it. Right. Which yeah. I then, do you, then you close the mic and you go, Oh, I forgot that really important. Fact. Exactly. I so yeah. I always want to make sure that I've got something. Yeah. I think down. with history, especially history and with politics, I can be a little bit more loose with it, but with history, you want to, you, the facts are there. The like, facts you, are facts, which right, is yeah. something again, but again, people doubting facts being facts. That's not new. <laughs> so you, you, your last episode, we're recording this in late October. Your last mm -hmm. episode was in July. So that's uh, really July 21st. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's August. September, so that's almost three months ago. Yes. We have been putting some episodes out on Patreon. Yeah. And you have a good Patreon catalog. So uh, we have almost got, on two. Yeah. yeah. There's a ton of content here that's really good. So what are you, what's your main pain point here with this podcast? Are you like, do I close this down? Do I, wh I what's, think for me, problem? it's for me, the main pain point we're having is I'm not very good at social media. Okay. And I think that's one of the main ways you promote your podcast. Right. Yeah. And also other Jen went back to school. She's finishing her degree. So we have more time constraints on us. So I've been picking and choosing 
when I pull her in for recording and production. And so that means I have an obligation to the our patrons on Patreon. So that's right. where I've been putting the recordings out as I can. But the main pain point is social media and starting to pivot to our new brand. Like we're toying with the idea of Drunk Gals Media mm-hmm. as an umbrella with drunk mythology gals. Cause I still want to talk about mythology. It has a big role in ways we don't even realize in our society. You can, if you look back at Socrates, you're like that. I'm not going to swear. <laughs> that, that's what Tolkien's whole point is that there's something lacking in British society because we don't have the mythology. So let's create the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But also Socrates we laud him as this amazing founding figure of Western civilization. But when you really go back and study his philosophy and you look at what he was advocating and how he actually tried, he trashed the sophists and the sophists were really being like, we're just saying we can see both sides. Now, and before so- we end up in an episode of, Drunk I know Mah- I'm sorry. Okay? Your ADD <laughs> kicked in there, Kate. So your main issue is how to promote the podcast. Yeah. Can I be honest? You're not doing the podcast. So why would you want to promote it? I think it's a chicken and the egg thing. I, I was working so hard, putting so many episodes out and I had the automatic distribution. I do custom cover art for every single episode Mm -hmm. and I just got tired. Yeah. so, So here's the thing about your show is that it's not current events, right? Like where mine is very current. Yeah, your, no, this is your back catalog is very valuable and evergreen. Is there anything in here that if I went back and listened to episode three that would date it? No. Nope. Okay. Did nope. you is this video or just audio? It's just audio. Okay. So one thing you could do is maybe just set a goal of look, we're gonna do one a month. Mm-hmm. While we're working, your passion is moving in that other direction, but you still feel a duty to this. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously going to drive interest in the other thing. I don't think that you can let this go. I don't think that you could. No, I don't want to. Yeah. But I do think three episodes out where you've done, you're really consistent, but we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight episodes this year. Mm -hmm. I think if you at least set the goal of, look, we're maybe you take those Patreon episodes and you switch it up a little bit and say, look, Release we're going to do a 15 minute teaser in the public feed. And if you want to hear the rest, go to Patreon. Yeah. So then that kind of solves your workflow of how you, you you're you feel the duty to and I do too, Patreon first because those mm-hmm. people are supporting you. So you yeah. but you also have something in the feed. So if you're producing something every month or a couple times a month for Patreon. Yeah. How can you take a chunk of that and put it into your public feed. So that way you've got some consistency there Yeah. because what you don't want is people to drop the feed. I don't think they'll drop the feed, especially if you keep it active, yeah. but people will sometimes go, look, I've got 10 podcasts on my roster here. It's getting too crowded. Let me clean up the ones that haven't released in, in a month yeah. or so. And so that would be one thing that I'd worry about. But then the other thing that you could do, you could take, you could take your existing catalog And it would create a little bit of work, but in terms of social media, I think you could take your existing catalog and pull from some of these episodes, some sound clips and use Mm -hmm. headliner to create something. I don't know. I just found a new tool called video V I D dot Y O. I don't know if it uses audio too. I'm trying to open it up to see, but AI tools are really helpful. And so what video does is you put your video up into this system and then in your hour, it chops up 30 different reels and TikToks. Oh, wow. And again, so if it doesn't do that, this is a little bit of wonky, right? But what, yeah. you, what you could do is take your episode, your audio file, put it into headliner mm-hmm. and create the video file of it. Yeah. Okay. So what that'll do is it'll give you the cover art. You have this special cover art for every episode. You yes. put that into headliner. It'll create the squiggly lines Mm -hmm. and it'll create that video that a will go to YouTube because I think, are you on YouTube? Are you publishing there? We haven't been publishing on YouTube, but actually 
when I do Murder Most Ancient, that's where I'm going. So what you can do with uh, Headliner, and it may take you 30 bucks a month or something, but I think it'd be worth it to export your entire audio catalog with this system to mm -hmm. YouTube, because I think you have an enormous SEO audience that you're missing out on. There's a bunch of people that are going to search this content yeah. on YouTube that you're not accessing. And in the process, you'll get that video. And then you could use two different tools with that headliner video that's been created. You can then put that into video and have it break up into reels automatically. Yeah. Or you could put it into something like Descript. And what Descript does is, let me let's see if I can, I, I can't, yeah, I think I can pull it up here. It's going to be a little wonky. It'll look a little weird, but just be patient. Kate and everyone else. Sorry. So, no, have, you're good. I have pod dog in the room with me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I kicked my cat out for that very reason. <laughs> yeah. No, pod dog is 17 and toothless Aww. and he goes where he goes. <laughs> yes. So this is Descript. Okay. So it is an audio video editor with an unfortunate thing here. But so Descript uses AI to automatically transcribe your video. Oh, okay. And then what you can do is go through here and you could highlight what you can read it, basically. These episodes like the back of your hand. So right. look, let's say this point here, we're just going to highlight all of this and delete it. And then we're going to go here to this part and we're going to go delete all that. And then we're going to export that as our video clip and put that on social media. Okay, I'm going to Oh, do okay. That. Okay, because now what why do I say that? So because it correlates to the timestamps. It does it with all with timestamps. And then oh. what you can do is go in here, hit publish, download that clip, and then that becomes your social media clip. You could pull two or three from that. I yeah. think that may be a little bit better than the video solution where it's very inaccurate. I've got to spend 30 minutes figuring it out. Whereas with the descript method because you've got let me show you an example of what a headliner could look like. You can make it look fancier than I do, but I export all the audio from my podcast to the We Are Libertarians page. And why won't you open up in studio here, please? And so if you're looking in the back end, excuse me, everybody. Sorry, this is taking so long. Yeah, so we actually have with, so we use Zencaster for our recording platform. Okay. And they have the option when I produce and render the recording to tie it to a graphic. So I Perfect. could just go back and re-render those with the graphics. Yeah, so for instance, darn, it's, I need to get to this one. It's, I didn't have any of this prepared, but that's the, the beauty of live broadcasting, folks. Okay, so you're listening to the We Are Libertarians podcast network. Find all of our so shows. you can see okay, the yeah, yeah, graphics. Yeah. That's what like headliner looks like. Now you've got create creative art that you could use. I've just got this auto feed, so it automatically feeds. It's mm -hmm. got 31 views, but those are 31 people that may live in Poland that couldn't have heard the podcast otherwise <laughs> because they can't get to the American Apple directory. Right. So yeah, we actually have a pretty good global audience. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're missing a huge audience on YouTube that could be very yeah. beneficial. Um, but I think in terms of social media promotion, just a sub 60 second clip mm -hmm. would be huge. And they all prioritize video now. And if you have yeah. an audio on only podcast, I think that's one way that you could Go back and take your catalog. You can take a couple hours a weekend or mm -hmm. a month, two or three hours a month. You'll create enough little videos yeah. for multiple times a week using this method because you have those scripts. What was a good part of the story mm -hmm. where I think you will get hang up because hung up is that you will go, all right, we need the context here. So I need to move this around, move that around. That's where Descript is really handy because you can cut it really easily. Yeah. And copy and paste different play things, right? So you could end up with a two minute clip that kind of tells the story. So it's just a, a way of kind of creatively editing your podcast and creating a, a, a quick video that you could use for social. No, that's great. And that, that would really help. And I've noticed that video has really become a big piece of yeah. podcasting. I even have a couple podcasts that I listen, watch to yeah. on YouTube. 
Yeah, it's it's and not on important. another directory. So yeah, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes for Descript for everybody to grab. If you use that link, it gives me a little credit back. I also okay. recommend when you're when you're doing video, Streamyard is hugely helpful. It does. Everybody recommends Riverside, but I think Streamyard is a little better. And I'll I'll put a link in there too. Why a second feed? Why not use the feed that you have? and create this as like a sub series in the podcast feed that you have. I think because I think it's going to be a different animal. And I think that it really doesn't have mythology tied to it. And I'm also going to do cases that are later than the ancient Greeks and Romans. Like I said, anything up until about 1700, maybe 1750, which again, it pulls it away from the mythology. And also I have found out that a lot of people, they love the mythology, but they don't like the true crime or they like the true crime, but not the mythology. And I want a, I want to take the lessons I've been learning with drunk mythology gals and move it into more of a pre-polished package. Yeah, exactly. I, get that. I think I've seen a lot of especially independent podcasters, they will have two or three sort of runs at podcasting before they really find their niche. And sure. I even did an older one that isn't even up anymore and this was just a, another trial balloon. And Drunk Mythology Gals is obviously much more than a trial balloon. Yeah. But it is it's like going to high school and then you go to college. Yeah. Okay. I get that totally. All right. So is there another pain point? I think the other pain point for us is really understanding SEO and hashtags. And like, I've just, I, I don't know where to find them or how, how people use them. Or even in show notes, like I've seen people use them in show notes. I Does that do anything? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't okay, think no. it did. That's why I never bothered. No, but... it, does, it does on YouTube. Okay. Uh, and so when it comes to SEO, I, I do think there will be a time. And I think everybody should think about preparing your feed for five years from now, because I mm -hmm. think the space is going to look a lot different. There'll be a lot more features. But it's changed so much since I started in 2007. It's just totally. Oh, different. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, I had 100 episodes and can go back and readjust all my stuff. One one thing I would think about doing, um, you know, with Descript. So there's um, I'll, I'll try to find the, the, the name, the exact name of this and put it in. But I was using it today. I use it quite often. It's called Glimpse, I think. And it's a Chrome add on. Okay. That then automatically transcribes a YouTube video for you. Mm. And you hit the chat GPT button and it ports the transcript, the allowed characters. There's like a limit of like 40,000 characters in, in chat GPT and says, make five bullet points of this transcript. And I adjust it to say, write a summary for YouTube on this. And then I rewrite what chat GPT poorly writes. But I think in terms of SEO and hashtags, one thing that I think you can do that can be very helpful mm -hmm. is use ChatGPT to help improve your titles. Okay. To help improve, maybe put in some, let me check out your show notes here. But one thing that I noticed, oh, that's you. I, so, sorry, <laughs> that freaked me out. I went to click on it, but I can't. I, can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could go through your catalog and before you port everything over to YouTube, so you don't have to copy and paste it. But I think you may have to port it over to YouTube and then use the glimpse tool because putting a hundred episodes where some of these are three hours into train, you get 30 hours a month on the plan I'm on, oh, right? Okay, so you yeah. get limited amounts, but whereas like the YouTube glimpse tool is free, mm -hmm. but I think you could improve your titles. I think you can improve your show notes, AKA like the description. Mm -hmm. Where you could have it do your paragraph summary, but then also key takeaways. And okay. then what you're going to do is create a lot more text in the show notes that will be grabbable by oh, YouTube search okay, yep. and Apple podcast search. 
Um, because Apple Podcast Search, eventually we will get to the point in the next five years where when you search for someone's name, it'll pop up in the show notes. Right now, it just searches titles. But I think the time is coming very quickly where it'll be fully searchable. For, I think we'll get to a point probably in 10 years where the audio is searchable. Oh, wow. So yeah, no, it, I'm sure that's coming. Yeah, it's, it's that. already on the way. But I, I think in terms of how to best utilize, because you have a very valuable asset. Mm -hmm. You have, I'm in a... a patreon history group mm -hmm. and some of these guys have hundreds of thousands of downloads a month because they have done what you've done which is create a back catalog in a, a niche that is highly searchable that doesn't have a lot of stickiness to it like people will do 10 episodes on the history mm -hmm. of world war ii and then they'll bow out because it's yeah. really hard to do the research so the guy who has 500 episodes is just like killing it in terms of downloads and they make thousands of dollars on transactional advertising because yeah. <laughs> the, the reality of where we're at is if you say to me, here's my monthly downloads, I can tell you what megaphone and the Spotify ad network will pay you. Yeah. Right? So I'm not, we're nowhere near there. <laughs> no, but you will be, I think because you have a catalog and you have research and put effort into it. And it's a fun listen. Mm -hmm. It's substance along with, fun personalities that people relate to. And we were a lot drunker in the beginning, just to go back to that very first <laughs> I don't question. Think that's a, I don't think that's a positive. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're not as drunk. No, uh, we occasionally let loose on Patreon for like our really big, long episodes. But yeah. No. Yeah. So we, I think we learned that was one of our lessons. <laughs> yeah. So like looking at this, what I would recommend doing is spending a couple of weeks and using mm -hmm. and do the following transcribe all of your episodes either for free on the YouTube side with that tool. Mm -hmm. So create YouTube's YouTube videos, put it on YouTube, then use that transcription to put into chat GPT to help you create a description and key takeaways, and then ask it to write you 10 titles for okay. YouTube. All right. And then what it's going to do is give you 10 very bad titles. Mm -hmm. And then you can Frankenstein together the thing that you think is the most grabby because gotcha. One problem I think that you have is your, your titles are not grabby. Okay. They're not SEOable, right? Skull, right. nobody is Googling skull crushing feminists. But if you, if it were like your favorite skull crushing feminists, right? But the Scythians, how mm -hmm. the Scythians were the first skull crushing feminists, right. right? Like you're not taking advantage in the title of the word Scythian in the searches right. on, on YouTube okay. and on podcasts. So I think once you go through and create a systematic view of your titles that are SEOable and train chat GPT to, to do this for you, okay, you're, you're going to see a significant lift because I don't think that your advantage is necessarily on social media, pulling people in. I think you, there's limited reach there unless you're in like a lot of groups of mythology, women who like mythology, right? Well, that, that's your people. I don't have time. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I really think that your benefit for growing your podcast is SEO because you have what makes history and true crime so valuable is that people go and search for that subject and find in the directory the thing they're looking for. Gotcha. That's okay. where you're going to grow. It's not going to be on social media. You can do the video idea I mentioned earlier, but I think for me, your time is better spent beefing up these titles and descriptions and getting it into YouTube. And I think you will see over the next year a lot of growth Yeah. once you do that. Yeah, and I, I, I have always meant to put the little promotional 15-minute snippets of our Patreon episodes yeah. up there. Again, I think... One of the other lessons is it takes a village to raise a podcast. Yeah, it is a right. lot of work if you're doing all the research, all the writing. I, I grew I got to this point by doing 20 hours a week on We Are Libertarians. And it, yeah. everything slowed down when I had a wife and kids because now I've got to feed them. But yeah, that yeah, too. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. But that's no. where I think these AI tools can come in and be incredibly useful and shave mm -hmm. a lot of that time off because your brain after episode. 14 will go i just can't think of another creative title yeah but you can use chat gpt not to write the title for you you mm -hmm. will know especially as a writer like this is very poor but yeah. to give you the framework to act off of to mm -hmm. know all right this is what would attract me 
which is your listener. The person that you attract are the people that are interested in the same thing as you. Yeah. And I think what I was doing when I was creating the titles and the artwork is I, I create it after we record the episode. So right. it's a reference to an inside joke in the episode yeah. and the artwork is a one big Easter egg. I wanted to make our listeners feel like when they looked back at an episode and they saw the title and the artwork, there's a little smile that they're yeah. like, I know what that's about. That, that was a big thing. And that like inside the treehouse kind of stuff really helps grow your audience and network them together. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me a lot in the early days too. But I have found that SEOing to get new yeah. listeners works a lot better once better, you yeah. reach the stage that you're at because your audience is forgiving that the the title isn't as clever because the the truth now versus five years ago is you are fighting to get them to click play. Oh, and yeah. the title is everything to get them to click play because you're now competing with Hollywood. You're competing with the five late night hosts doing a podcast. You're not competing with a bunch yeah. of other like you and me competing against each other. We're now competing with people who have significant money putting into yep. this stuff. And so I just think that's like the number one thing is maximize your catalog to be searched for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think you have the kind of product here that will be the case. Yeah. And I, I'm committed. This is, I, I also have learned through this that, yeah, there are slowdowns, there are slumps, there are even hiatuses. The tipping point happens. Do you remember when we were kids, there were the teeter totters? Yeah. They don't have them anymore because yeah. they're too dangerous. But like you used to, the game was to force your end of the teeter totter down so hard you would bounce the other person off. Yeah. And I think that's the tipping point. It's that tenacity to refuse to get off your side of the teeter totter. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I've every year there's two or three periods where I want to quit. And yeah. I've always been that way. It's just hard. It's a lot of work. Sometimes it's little payoff. Yeah. You know, but then and you get and sometimes one. it's just life things. Yeah, no it's hard. Health, and then you get family. that one letter of like, you've changed my life. And you're like, all right, I'll keep doing this. Yeah, we did. We actually had one of our patrons. We were debating what the hell are we doing? And we got a letter from a totally unknown patron. And we're like, who is this person? They're not a friend of the family subscribing. But right. they, they just loved us and listened to us to get through their night shift mm. and we made it less lonely because it was like hanging out with friends right. we were like okay it's deep it's that is deep yeah it yeah. i never cry but i was bawling <laughs> yeah okay i could talk to you all day but we've got to wrap up so shameless self-promotion where can people follow you and find this podcast and then learn about the new one Anywhere that you get podcasts, you can get Drunk Mythology Gals. And I would say we're on Instagram at, we actually have a whole thing at the end of every episode. <laughs> we're like trading off. We're on Instagram at Drunk Mythology Gals. We're on TikTok at Drunk Mythology Gals. We have a website, drunkmythologygals.com. We have an email. We never check it. Don't email us. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and yeah, and I think we'll be making the announcements about our upcoming efforts pretty soon. And you'll see that on Instagram. And we're also on YouTube. Got to get that YouTube in shape. Yeah. But yeah, you can find Drunk Mythology Gals on YouTube. So I'll be putting out announcements everywhere about how to find us for awesome. well, our Kate, episodes and next venture. Kate, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. All right. And thanks so much for joining us here on pl podcasting and platforms. I almost said one of my other five podcasts. <laughs> I'm, it's bulk record on Tuesdays and sometimes it gets to me. But thanks for joining us here on podcasting <laughs> and platforms. Please check out the website podcasting and .com. If you want great coaching like this, I'm available. Click the link to schedule your appointment right at the top of the website and we can help work out your problem. Thanks so much for joining us here on podcasting and platforms.